All right, we have a beautiful sunny day here. Nice and warm, not too warm. It's probably low 70s, mid 70s, something like that. Like perfect temp, basically. Very conducive weather to getting a lot of work done, which is ideal because today we have a lot of work to get done. today is to get the new dumbbell in, which we got. Pachow! Show you guys what this does. Uh, so get that in, get the front rear cover on, get the oil pan on, get the engine in the subframe, make the two dry sub lines from the pump to the pan, and then get the engine in the car, start hooking stuff up. Should be able to get all that done today. That is definitely the goal. Like I said, it's definitely the type of day and the weather and the vibe to like get that much work done. So I'm hyped, I'm hyped. I'm ready to get this thing back in the car and definitely real close to getting the car back on the road. So first order of business is the part we have been waiting on, this aluminum dumbbell. So there's a few companies that make these. I don't even remember which one I got mine from, but basically quick explanation. This is where the factory oil pump feed goes into the block. It travels back here. That dumbbell ends right here. So it forces the oil to go down through the filter itself and then the oil goes up and then pumps to the cans and then down to the rod bearings. In a normal application, what that does is make sure that your oil goes down through the filter and doesn't bypass the filter and go straight up unfiltered. For us, this is where our feed is gonna come in for our dry sump pump. So our pump here, that's gonna feed out of the pump, through the filter, through the cooler, or vice versa, but basically through those two things, whoop, right over to here, and then this is going to, it's gonna pump up through here, through the engine. So for us, that dumbbell is what prevents the oil that we're pumping into the engine from going to the front to basically nowhere, to just dump back into the crankcase. So it's very important to maintain oil pressure and all those things. So that is why we went with the billet one. Really, I don't probably not necessary to do this, but my thoughts were, you know, this is what's keeping our oil pressure and oil going where it needs to go. Uh, it's definitely worth having like the tightest tolerance as we can. So. Anyway, we gotta get that out first. I'm not even sure how to take the old one out. I think our best bet is gonna be to pull the engine off the stand. Well, we'll pull the pan off, then pull the engine off the stand and do the dumbbell in the rear plate and main seal with it hung. And then we can put it back on the stand to do the front cover, the oil pan, and then once we get that wrapped up, we'll take it back off the stand. Plan of action for today, for now, for whatever, for our project. I didn't bolt the oil, uh, intake back on, so that makes it easy. We can just pop this thing right back off. So I guess let's get this thing hung on the hoist and then get to work. All right, we're gonna try to do this without taking it off the uh, sand here. Cause it, it doesn't seem that bad. All right, so to get this out, I don't know. I'm assuming we pry it with a screwdriver. Screwdriver, pick. Hopefully it wanna work. Oh yeah. Oh, oh God. Right, let's switch to the screwdriver method. Damn it. <laughs> There we go. Oh, 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 trolled, trolled. Look at that. Oh, it just barely doesn't come out. It's so close. Yeah, we'll just take it off. We'll take it off. That'll be the easiest way. the engine off the stand which gives us clear access back here we definitely can't get the rear cover on with it sitting on this tire but i figured we can do everything else you know clean the uh, crank itself and get pull this out which should be look at this monumentous occasion Whew, it's out. but yeah so we'll do all that and then we'll hoist it up i just don't like doing a ton of stuff with the 
engine hanging. It just, I don't know, sketches me out a little bit. So we'll do as much as we can with it sitting here, lift it up, and then we can do the rear cover. All right, so my buddy Huffman told me about this. It's, uh, what is it called? 3M Roll Lock Bristle Disc. Uh, works really, really well for cleaning gasket material off like aluminum surfaces. It doesn't gouge or scratch it, um, but it gets all the gasket material off. So I've used it on literally everything. It's amazing. I've kind of worn it out already though, so I really need to order another one, but we're gonna use it to clean this up. All right, I lubed up the O-ring on this bad boy. Slide her in. Ooh, she's tight, it's a tight fit. Oh, there we go, and we're in. That was really easy. <laughs> All right, well, that was the main thing we needed to do. We'll lift her back up, finish cleaning the crank, and then we can put the rear main on. is on, new dumbbell is in, engine's back on the stand. Now we can move on to the front. Uh, probably equally sensitive as in like we need to be careful not to mess it up. So we got to do the front cover and the ATI super damper. So this is what we got. We got our new front cover, front main seal, oil pan gasket, ATI damper. This is our specific piece that will run the dry sump pump. So we have that cog, this belt, this pulley, which this pulley goes on our dry sump pump like. So first thing we need to do is put the front cover on loosely because the crank pulley is what is going to center your front cover. So it's very important that you put the front cover on loose. Don't tighten any of the bolts down until you've gotten your crank pulley completely seated. Let's get to it. Well, my camera battery died while I was installing the crank pulley hub, but we got it on. So we have fashioned our rear holding device. So we've got a pry bar, we got two flywheel bolts. I, you gotta make sure to turn them far enough into where the whip is sitting on the pry bar that way you don't damage the threads. Um, but it's bound up against this. So now we can torque our crank pulley bolt on to 240 foot pounds. So we're gonna use the old bolt first, torque it, pull it out, torque that. At least that's what I understand from the instructions. Yeah, use your old bolt to finish seating the damper and torque 240 foot-pounds and remove it. Let's get to it. So this torque wrench is pretty sweet. It's an AC Delco one. I ordered it and they were out of stock for the longest time and I finally got it. I forget, I ordered it on eBay, but it goes up to, I think, 247, but it goes all the way down to 12. So it's good all around torque wrench. I think it was like a little over 200 bucks. Not at all sponsored, paid for this myself, but my buddy Keegan found it and it seemed like the best deal for a torque wrench, especially if you own an LS and need to torque your crank pulley. Oh, come on, dude. The only thing that's annoying is it does this thing where it just flashes zeros and then eventually starts up again. All right, now we can take it off. I think the mid torque's got it. We got a fresh battery in it. struggled a little, but she got it. However, that tells me that when we took it off this engine originally and it came off with no problem with this impact, probably was not tight enough. Whenever you RTV something, get extra paper towels ready to clean your hands when you have to grab other stuff. Uh, on the bond. All right, she's ready. Come on, guy. I've tried pressing every button during this and it, it does nothing, unless I'm missing something. Should eventually stop and then I can set my torque. Maybe I do need to press a button. I always try to press a button. It doesn't seem like it does anything. All right. Whew. It's a little bit.
little bit of a workout. Okay, now we can do the pulley for the pump, belt, well, belt and pulley for the pump, both at the same time, something like that. Those two, damper shell, uh, and then we can put the pan on and then we're ready to put it in the subframe. Moving right along. Well, that was a relatively stressful part. I was slightly worried about just getting all this on correctly, but it's all on. Stoked. Okay, flip it over, oil pan, back in the subframe, yes. Oil pan subframe, getting there. All right, guys. Well, the car life has struck again. <laughs> okay, so I was looking at this and I was like, man, I just feel like that damper is not offset enough for my F-body accessory drive. It's like, it's gotta be, it's gotta be fine. It's gotta be the right one. And I was like, well, let me check. Before I go any further, let me check. And lo and behold, it is not. Obviously this is where the belt rides on the crank. And this is our, just our alternator, but obviously all of our accessories Line up together our alternator power steering pump water pump. So this is the wrong damper. So I would be lying if I said I wasn't bummed. Like I'm, I'm, I'm pretty bummed about this. And I normally don't get bummed about stuff like this because I've just been doing it so long and I know that like this is how it works. Like things just don't always work out. You get the wrong parts, miscommunication, whatever the case may be delays you and, and that just is what it is. And I, I build that kind of into my expectations of how things are gonna go every time I'm working on a car. I guess just some of the people that watch these videos don't understand that. You know, they haven't maybe ever done it themselves or they've only seen kind of these unrealistic expectations set where like none of the bad is shown and only the good is shown. Like everything worked out great and we built this car and it was, it was great. Um, I don't know. I really don't know. You know, I get the comments from those people that are like, ah, oh, you take forever to build stuff. You take forever to build stuff. If I address that, then I'm whining, you know, and it's like, you, you just can't win. And it's like, it's frustrating because like, I'm bummed about this and I'm, because we're making steady progress. We were definitely going to get the engine in the car today. No problem. Tomorrow we could have wrapped up all the stuff and then Wednesday finished, like done the dry sump lines and had it running by Thursday, you know, but instead, it's Sunday, I gotta wait till at least tomorrow to get a response about the damper. Best case one gets shipped out tomorrow, next day air, I get it late Tuesday, um, and probably won't have the motor, won't be to where we were gonna be today until Wednesday midday. Um, which obviously throws off my entire plans for the week uh, as far as content and getting stuff done, and it, it's just tough. So like I'm bummed about it, but then I also have the people who don't really understand the realities of building a car that are giving me hell about it. Like, oh, you take forever, you take forever. And then it, it's just tough. And like, this is gonna be construed as me whining. Oh, Taylor just whines all the time. Like, no, I'm just explaining what went wrong, why it went wrong, or, or why are we getting delayed? And I can't not show you guys the reality of building a car. I just can't gloss over that and make it look like everything's great and just skip this part, get the right one, put it on, and pretend like none of this ever happened. I can't do that because I want you guys to see the true reality of building a car, especially on a scale like this, like one guy in his shop building the car himself. You know, there's there's just unfortunate realities behind it, you know, and things that happen. So, you know, it, it is a double whammy because, like, I'm bummed, you guys are bummed. I'm sure I'm still going to get comments about how I'm whining or how I take forever, regardless of if you're addressing it or not. Um, and it's just like an all around like mess situation, you know? But again, I've, I've been doing this a long time, so I totally understand that this stuff happens and I, I try not to let it bum me out, but it's harder when I know there's gonna be people on the other side of the camera giving me hell about something I don't really have that much control over. So, I don't know, I don't know. It's kind of like my, my ramble for the day. I just, ah, just bummed, man. I was so hyped to make a lot of progress today. I really was. And we were shredding, we were getting stuff done, everything was going together smoothly, and we hit a roadblock, and that's just the way it is. So, uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll hear back. Hopefully we can get the correct damper, it's like Tuesday, um, we can get back on this, and maybe we can still have it running by the end of the weekend. That's my optimistic goal. 
assuming nothing else goes wrong. But yeah, we've also got some other fun projects planned out for this week. I just kind of had everything laid out and time frames worked out really well to get everything done and videos and all that. Um, and it, this kind of throws a wrench in that, but we're still gonna get it all done. Optimistic Taylor again. So yeah, um, not really anything else I can do today. I can't put the pan on because when I change the damper, I'll need to loosen the front cover again to get it all centered correctly. And when you put the pan on, you know, you RTV the gap between the front cover and the block. So I can't really do that until I switch the damper shell out. So for now we are stuck, but gives me a nice opportunity to play with my drone some and then go do some emails and order parts. So we'll end this out with some drone shots. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll see you tomorrow. Wish me luck. Goodbye.